big. This is EF4, EF5 gear kit right here. Last Saturday, March 20th, was the first day of spring, and that means the spring storm season is here. And we got started with a tornado outbreak in Texas and severe weather in the south. Details and a full adjuster forecast in Max's full report. And coming up, the best claim solution, formerly the best IRS, gets a shiny new re-rebrand, a hot new adjuster tool solution from Bully Bag Drops, Field Pros Direct has a conference coming up. New live CCC1 training from IA Path. Two big stories from Alacrity Claim Solutions, formerly Whirly. And finally, what's the number one thing you can do right now to get prepared for the 2021 storm season? But first, the NACA Minute. Adjuster TV interviewed dozens of IA firms and adjusters at the 2021 National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters Convention and Job Fair this past January. And we feature those interviews here on Adjuster TV News. Here's Cindy Zimmerman, the owner of Florida-based Educational Services and Consulting, or ESC, to talk a little bit about getting a Florida license and the benefits of attending the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters Convention and Job Fair. I'm Cindy Zimmerman. I'm the owner of Educational Services and Consulting, which was founded here in Central Florida. It's been in business for over 18 years. And for the first four or five years, it was only held in classrooms and um, probably about 20 different local colleges sponsored it. And about 15 years ago, we went online. And so now we have courses in um, ACA, which is the Accredited Claims Adjuster, as well as the RCSR, which is required in Florida. So if you take our course, the most important thing is at the end of the course, you take our exam. Our exam then on a daily basis is uploaded to the state of Florida. At that point, then you just need to go online to the state of Florida, do your fingerprinting, and you get your license without taking the state exam. That's probably the biggest benefit of all because many people who aren't good test takers um, really enjoy our course. The two courses that we offer, first is the ACA, which is the Accredited Claims Adjuster, and that's the one that you would get if you want to become an adjuster. And also in the state of Florida, there's an RCSR, which is a customer service rep position. So if you want to work in an insurance industry in Florida, you need to have that certification as well. So if you do get your ACA in the state of Florida, which is the Florida license, it is reciprocal to many states in the country. So we have people all over the United States that take our online course with the Florida license and then reciprocate back to their home state. We actually became NACA members a few years ago and the reason we joined is because we thought it was a market of people that were already adjusters. We knew that so there really wasn't the market to have people that are here take the course but their network of people that they know that would like to take the course. Also um, a real mission of our company is to hit those markets where people are in that um, transition and most times if you're an adjuster you have a market of people that talk to you often about how do you become an adjuster so we'd like them to share our information with those people so they could open the doors to them to join it as well. The reason for attending the NACA conference is because we have felt that when we went last year, we felt a lot of people from the Florida area went to Vegas for the show, and we were here in Florida this year, so we figured it would be heavily attended by Florida people, which we have seen that, so it was a good move to do that. But I think overall, NACA brings in a lot of adjusters who have a lot of experience and also know the industry well, which can help us be educated on what markets we should go after to find additional adjusters. I think many benefits come from NACA where I've seen a lot this year, where new adjusters that are just coming into the industry get a chance to marry up with people who have many years of experience, which helps them see things from a different light and see all the opportunities that exist in the adjusting world. So I think it's a great mix of newbies as well as many years of experience, and they kind of all come together and share that information, and there's just a lot of buzz about that. I meet new people like, I've only been doing this for two months, or I've been doing this for 30 years, and so it's kind of a good time for them to kind of link up and share that information. What sets educational services and consulting apart from other training companies is that we really want to bring the opportunity to people that um, probably have difficulty with um, taking tests and we've really written our course to be very user friendly. 90% of the people that take our course pass it the first time through. Second thing that we offer is if you don't pass it the first time through, you have up to 60 days to retake it as many times as you like. So that's really great for people who kind of get scared about tests, take it the first time, maybe don't do as well as they want, go ahead and take it again the second or third time, and within that 60 days, they get a score they're happy with, and we submit it to the state, and everybody goes on their merry way. So we really believe that we've written the course for people that really want to do this and might need a little extra help to get through it, so we felt that we've developed the course to do that for them. You can go to our website, which is www.escconnected.com. 
many people forget the double C, so it is ESC connected, so there are two C's in there. Um, and we also, if you go to that website, there is a toll-free 800 line to call in. We have customer service people staffing that line pretty much 24 hours a day. If you're in the middle of the course and are confused about something, call that number. Someone will answer and get back to you. And we really believe that it's a well-written course, and we every year have it reviewed and make sure that's up to compliance with legal and everything updates. So we're very proud that we have that to bring to the industry to get people trained to become adjusters. Check out ESC at ESCConnected.com and for discounts on lodging, gear, training, licensing, and CE, as well as one-on-one -on -one mentorships, join NACA right now at NACATADJ.org. And of course, the convention is an outstanding place to network and the best place to interview with dozens and dozens of IA firms all in one place. You're watching Adjuster TV News. I'm Matthew Allen. And if you've never had a fried egg on pizza, you have no idea what you're missing. What was the largest recorded hailstone in U.S. history? Was it six inches in diameter, eight inches, 14 inches, or 18.5 inches in diameter? Find out after the break. Hey, hey. Mr. Insured, how's it going? It's going great today, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. This is actually Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School. So you wanna learn claims from the most experienced veteran adjusters, but you can't find anybody who will let you ride along with them? Then let me tell you about Adjuster TV Plus. Developed by Adjuster TV and its industry partners, including the high-end training center of Veterans Adjusting School in Arizona, Adjuster TV Plus is a growing library of in-depth training videos created just for independent adjusters. Learn scoping and estimating from professional trainers and adjusters. Learn how to handle customer interactions with confidence. Learn the ins and outs of scoping and estimating exterior hail claims. And detailed videos about how to handle smoke, ice dam, water claims, and auto claims. Adjuster TV Plus also features the very best of three years of Adjuster TV's YouTube videos. Educational, entertaining, and inspiring. Come ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Okay, so what was the largest recorded hailstone in history? Six inches, eight inches, 14 inches, or 18.5 inches in diameter. If you Google this during the break, then you discovered that the answer is eight inches. The largest officially recognized hailstone on record to have been captured in the US was that which fell near Vivian, South Dakota on July 23rd, 2010. It measured 8.0 inches in diameter and 18.5 inches in circumference and weighed in at 1.9375 pounds. When initially collected after the storm, the stone had a reported diameter of 11 11 inches, but deteriorated in the observer's freezer owing to a loss of power after the storm. Lee Scott, who collected the monster stone, said that he had originally planned to make daiquiris out of the hail, but fortunately thought better and placed it in a freezer before turning it over to the National Weather Service for certification. The hailstone ended up at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. And here, NCAR scientist Charles Knight prepares to make a three-dimensional model of the hailstone but it looks like he's just trying to figure out if he can smoke that thing. The Best Claim Solutions, formerly known as the Best IRS, insurance recruiting specialists, announced the company's complete rebranding, including a name change. Due to the expansion beyond claims, staffing, and independent adjusting, the Best Claim Solutions has implemented a complete rebrand to better align with this growth. Here's VP of Business Development, Courtney Cook, with more. Considering that we have been really a recruiting and staffing company for you know over two decades, we have evolved into that claim solution place, and it just didn't feel like we were properly um, demonstrating what our services are and what value we could bring to an organization in that claim solution side. And so Amy and her team led the rebranding this year, and now we are the best claim solution. So it doesn't just um, start and stop with recruiting for direct hire and temp staffing. It also has, um, you know, a pillar of our business that supports claims operations from the auto space to the property space. And then even more excitingly, we added in content this year. So we can do valuation, inventory creations, and even do replacement cost services for everybody. So I guess the short version of it, Matt, is that we wanted to have an opportunity to create a solution based on what the need of the carrier is. And they all have different needs. And, and so we, we are now afforded that opportunity, especially since we're privately owned. So we get to 
We get to create our own pathway based on what our clients want. For more information, go to thebestclaims.com. What is the difference between a hurricane and a typhoon? Besides the name, of course. Is it you can fly through a hurricane but not a typhoon? Or because of their name, hurricanes are faster because hurry is in the name? That's science, isn't it? Or could it be typhoons are the only ones visible from space? Or finally, typhoons only occur in the Northwest Pacific. If you're an adjuster and you don't know this one, you're fired. As an adjuster, of all the things that you've got to have, there is really none more important than your state adjuster license, especially your very first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else. Some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. Adjuster TV has partnered with Adjuster Pro because Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as a claims professional. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro right now. And now for our trivia answer. What's the difference between a hurricane and a typhoon? If you answered typhoons only occur in the Northwest Pacific, you are correct. Tropical systems beyond tropical storm strength are called hurricanes in the North Atlantic Ocean, as well as in the Pacific Ocean, east of the International Dateline in the north and east of the 160 degree east longitude in the south. In the Northern Pacific, west of the Dateline, they are called typhoons. In the South Pacific and Indian Ocean, the generic term tropical cyclone is used regardless of the strength of the wind associated with the weather system. No matter what you call them, they're all basically the same thing. Jared Allen over at Bully Bag just released the next gen Bully Bag Ultra Pouch. Introducing the G2. This is the generation two of the Ultra Pouch. I wanna go over some of the changes that we've made um, to uh, make this the uh, second generation. First off, you may notice a little bit of a color difference here. This one is uh, our candy pink on black. Very, very exciting. It's very good looking. Um, but it's extremely, extremely organized as well. We have three additional pouches, so that takes the entire pouch count on this one unit up to 15. Um, this inspiration came to us from um, our home inspector partners, uh, Brick Kicker, who said they needed a place for little screws and things of that nature. So I said, okay, done, let's fix it. The pink on black, really we wanted to provide some flair, some color, some dimension to the next generation. Um, as we move around the bag, to show you some more of the changes that we made, was we got rid of the shorter battery holster and replaced it with a full length screwdriver holster that's open on the bottom on each side. The hooks have been replaced by the daisy chain, which I really like, I think it's clean. And we've added embroidery on the outside of the flaps here, as you can see. To add more uh, sturdy application, we added a third rivet system with the steel rivets this time and some color to the paddle itself, which I think looks really sharp. This is um, your branding patch here a patch of soft velcro where we've had so many requests that companies would like to have their uh, their logo placed on the bag and um, things of that nature and we've always accommodated as much as we can but in this case here we can actually just have the patches woven with hard velcro backing put it right on there looks fantastic if you don't want the patch that's fine you don't have to have the patch you can always attach um, other other uh, tools there using a hard Velcro sticky system. A lot of people know what I'm talking about there. Um, this is available, of course, in the pink on black, as you see here. I'm wearing the gray on black, which I really, really like. And I'm really starting to really dig this um, black on black. It's got 15 pockets, eight of those with sealable hook and loop chambers, capable of holding all your field tools, Chalk, tape measure, laser, moisture meter, masks, pitch gauge, shingle gauge, gloves, just about anything that needs its own compartment for quick availability will be contained all in one fast, lightweight, high speed little unit. And speaking of gloves, check out these pit grip gloves. 
light enough for hot summer roof inspections, but durable enough to stick to the shingles so you can climb around without burning your hands. These are two huge safety issues that make doing roof inspections even more dangerous. Not being able to have good solid handholds on shingles and roof accessories and having stuff fall out of your tool bag, right? So you can zip this super closed so stuff doesn't fall out. So you need gloves that aren't jet black so that they don't get too hot and you need a pouch that zips up to keep your gear from spilling out when you're moving around a steep roof. And by gear, I mean your expensive phone or laser. And check it out, we don't have them yet, but you'll soon be able to get Adjust Your TV patches when you order your bully bag, right? Storm season has started, so get yours right now while they're in stock at bullybag.com. High speed, low drag. Recently, I chatted with tech-centric IA firm FieldPros Direct CEO Matt Anderson about their upcoming conference and their acquisition of the TPA firm Bridgewater Group. I'm Matt Anderson, CEO, founder of FieldPros Direct. Thanks for having me on here today, Matt. I'm excited to share a little bit about our upcoming conference and also an exciting acquisition we made in uh, er earlier this month. So we'll be hosting a virtual adjuster conference this in April, the 26th through the 30th. For those who didn't attend last year, this uh, our virtual conference is a series of classes or um, courses with some of our carrier partners. We've also included some uh, CE credits, some other really useful things to help adjusters get ready for not only this upcoming cat season, but also uh, to handle daily claims for us and some of the new opportunities that we have at Bill Pro Strict that we have in the pipeline. Um, it, it'll help adjusters in general, even if it's not working with us, but we're excited to do that this year virtually. Last year, it was such a big success kind of out of necessity with uh, with the COVID circumstances, but it has been a, a big win for us in that so many more adjusters can participate. Also, so many more carriers, so many more other instructors have been able to, uh, to participate as well that may not have been if we were meeting in person. We definitely miss the, uh, the in-person uh, aspect of having a co conference, but uh, we love the, the virtual conference and the accessibility. It's gonna be not only courses, but we'll also offer two full days of one-on-one -on -one networking with our team. So adjusters can interview with FPD team members and we'll be offering the CE credits Com. Give us some information about the acquisition. Earlier this month, on March 2nd, Phil Pros Direct acquired Bridgewater Group. Bridgewater is a 25-year-old independent adjusting company specializing in third-party administration claims and liability. This acquisition uh, brings together the Phil Pros technology-based, uh, very property claim-centric platform with the Bridgewater's 25 plus years service-based uh, experience, really focusing on that, that TPA world, the property world, uh, but bringing those two together uh, is really gonna be a huge benefit to our both of our teams and all of our, our business, uh, our partners. With this new relationship comes a lot of uh, opportunities for us to uh, accelerate our growth and the liability side of the things, the CAT side, uh, a lot more opportunities for adjusters to uh, work with us on a lot of different types of claims. Uh, the, we, we knew Bridgewater well as we had an existing relationship with them. They were a, a TPA. We worked with them. They, they sent us field work. We knew each other very well. We knew that the cultures aligned really well, kind of the, the family type uh, culture. Where we, our goals are ultimately to set up everyone that works with us for success. So that was uh, kind of the common thread and one of the things that's, that's made uh, the coming together of Bridgewater and Phil Pros so successful already in just a, a short period of time. For more information, go to fieldprosdirect.com and to register for the conference, go to fpdconference.com. Where was the biggest earthquake in the US in the 20th century? Was it Missouri, Florida, California, or Alaska? Stay tuned to find out. As an independent adjuster, do you feel like you only have bad, expensive choices for health insurance plans? 
And when you have to use the insurance, you'll have to pay a lot out of pocket. Makes you wonder why you even have insurance in the first place. The stakes are high. Having no coverage puts you and your family at risk. It doesn't have to be this way. You want peace of mind with common sense health coverage you can count on. That doesn't include things you don't need. You need real insurance with world-class protection from established carriers. Not health sharing and not cobbled together prepaid medical. And you shouldn't have to wait for it. Get approved in days, not weeks. There is no risk and no cost to see if you qualify for these high quality plans. Not everybody will qualify, but you've got nothing to lose by getting a free consultation. Visit adjustertv.com slash health for more information and to apply. This is Adjuster TV. Welcome back. Where was the biggest earthquake in the US in the 20th century? Was it Missouri, Florida, California, or Alaska? And the answer is Prince William Sound in Alaska. The 1964 Alaskan earthquake, also known as the Great Alaskan Earthquake and the Good Friday Earthquake, occurred at 5.36 p.m. on Good Friday, March 27th. Across South Central Alaska, ground fissures, collapsing structures, and tsunamis resulting from the earthquake caused about 131 deaths. Lasting four minutes and 38 seconds, the magnitude 9.2 megathrust earthquake remains the most powerful earthquake recorded in North American history and the second most powerful earthquake recorded in the world. And I thank you, Wikipedia. I'm sure that's probably all accurate. The New Madrid quakes in Missouri happened over December and January in 1811 and 1812, with epicenters under and near the Mississippi River between Memphis and St. Louis. Several quakes and aftershocks occurred, measuring an estimated 7.0 to 8.6 on the Richter scale. Incidentally, the Richter scale measures the strength of earthquakes and is logarithmic which means that each level of the scale is 10 times stronger than the previous level. So a 2.0 on the scale is 10 times stronger than a 1.0, and a 3.0 is 10 times stronger than a 2.0, which means that the Alaska earthquake was bigger than the New Madrid quake by a lot. I'm Matt, I'm your adjuster. We talked on the phone a couple days ago. Oh, right. If you didn't know it, Adjuster TV has a sister network called Adjuster TV Plus. We produce advanced content for property and auto adjusters, and we mainly focus on the nuts and bolts skills of claims handling, including construction, scoping, how to handle customers, how to identify different types of damage, and so on. We release new training videos and video series every month, including what we call virtual ride-alongs, where we scope properties and talk about all the things you might encounter on your field inspections. It's good times. We have an annual subscription as well as a month-to-month -month subscription, and I think the annual subscription is really the best deal. And coming up on Adjuster TV Plus, Guy Grand, co-founder of Veteran Adjusting School in Sedona, Arizona, and myself scope a light hail loss, which, if you've ever run hail claims, you know that big crazy hail damage is very easy to scope and write up. It's the light stuff that takes more time and causes more grief. Learn the ins and outs of dealing with light hail damage on property claims all through April at adjustertvplus.com. IA Path is holding its first ever live online CCC1 certification and training course beginning on March 30th. It will be a two-night event taking place on Tuesday, March 30th, and Thursday, April 1st. Registrants will get lifetime access to a self-paced video course and recordings of the event as a companion. According to Chris Stanley, founder and CEO of IA Path, we chose to train on CCC1 because it is the leader and industry standard software in auto claims. If an adjuster wants to work auto claims, they need to learn this software. The CCC1 software is roughly $225 a month, but not required to attend this online training. Also, the software is not offered as part of the training, just so you know. To sign up, head to training.iapath.com and click on the CCC1 certification course. Coming up, Alacrity acquires 470, and later, we've got debris. Oh, it just lifted something. Woo! Something just got oh, lofted. Not, no, good, not yeah, good, not good. How can you tell the temperature without a thermometer? Sounds kind of like a dad joke, but I promise it isn't. Counting how many times a deer blinks in one minute times pi. Counting the seconds between the flash of lightning and the thunder and dividing by three. Counting how many times a cricket chirps in 14 seconds and adding 37. 
or by measuring the length of a snowflake in millimeters and multiplying by 32. Stay tuned to find out. If you're interested in getting the absolute best property claims training available, then I wanna tell you about my friends over at Veteran Adjusting School in Sedona, Arizona. As a licensed vocational school, Veteran Adjusting School trains you to become a complete insurance adjuster with a focus on catastrophe property adjusting. When you graduate from the Boss Trained Insurance Adjuster Program, you're ready to begin your exciting new career, whether as a daily adjuster or as a cat adjuster. Listen, there are many outstanding adjuster schools out there and you have to get some training somewhere. But Voss stands out among its peers for the depth and breadth of its program, as well as its continuing support and mentorship for graduates long after students become working adjusters. Go to adjustertv.com slash VAS now and chat with an enrollment specialist who will answer all of your questions and help you decide if Voss is the right choice for you. Adjustertv.com slash VAS. All right, how can you tell the temperature without a thermometer or Siri or Alexa? Was it the number of deer blinks, the seconds between the flash and the thunder, the cricket chirps, or by trying to measure snowflakes without melting them? And the answer is cricket chirps, first figured out by American physicist and inventor Amos Dolbear, because crickets are more or less active in a consistent measurable way. Depending on the temperature, you can count the number of times a cricket chirps in 14 seconds and then add 37 to that number to get within a degree or two of the actual temperature in Fahrenheit. You can do the same thing in Celsius by counting chirps for 25 seconds, dividing that number by three, and then adding four. If you Google this, and honestly, why wouldn't you? You'll find that there are a few different ways to do this calculation. I haven't tried it myself yet, but there are YouTube videos out there demonstrating that this is in fact legit. But don't let my nieces and nephews see this before I have a chance to impress them with my cricket lore. Alacrity Solutions Group recently announced the acquisition of 470 Claims Management. 470 Claims has established a solid reputation in delivering exceptional service to their clients. Their leadership team possesses years of industry experience, which serves as a key driver in the strong and long-lasting relationships they have been able to develop and continue to grow over the years, said Jim Pearl, CEO of Alacrity Solutions in a press release. Matt Fothery, founder and CEO of 470 stated, we are excited to become a part of the Alacrity Solutions enterprise. Their full service offerings, commitment to superior service and strong reputation across the industry are just a few of the traits that align strongly with 470 claims. Additionally, we share a common approach to our principles and how we conduct business in placing a priority on people, partnership, and an overall passion for this business. We look forward to continuing our track record of success and growth as part of the Alacrity Solutions Enterprise moving forward. The transaction with 470 claims is Alacrity's ninth acquisition since 2015. Alacrity would also like to invite you to their training center, grand reopening event that will be hosted on April 13th, one day before they open their doors for live in-person classes. Join them for a personalized tour of the facility, industry raffle giveaways, door prizes, and more. And don't worry, they will have a food truck on site. The event will be hosted mostly outside, weather permitting, with the exception of limited socially distanced facility tours. This will be a great way to meet some of the Alacrity staff and other industry folks for a fun afternoon of networking. As an added bonus, you may even have an opportunity to make an appearance on Adjuster TV, as we will have a TV crew there to cover the event for the April Nudes show. Do not miss out on this opportunity to be the first to see the unveiling of Alacrity's new state-of-the-art training facility. Classes kick off the very next day, April the 14th. For much more information and to get on the Alacrity roster, head over to alacritysolutions.com. Stay tuned for dramatic coverage of the tornado outbreak with your catastrophic adjuster weather report from Maxwell Olson. Okay, true or false, which one of these is true and which one is false? True or false, a cubic mile of ordinary fog contains less than a gallon of water. True or false, in 1899, it was so cold that the Mississippi River froze over its entire length. True or false, every second, around 100 lightning bolts strike the earth. 
true or false. For each minute of the day, 1 billion tons of rain falls on the Earth. And finally, true or false, the lowest temperature recorded on Earth was in July 21st, 1983 at minus 128.5 degrees in Antarctica. Find out after the break. Are you an insurance adjuster? Then you need insurance, adjuster. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. I really think you should get both of them. It doesn't matter if you're a W-2 or 1099 or work carrier direct. Protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the Insurance for Adjusters free guide, go to cplic.net slash adjustertv. All right, true or false? If you guessed that they were all false, then you were totally wrong. They're all true. Well, it's here. The 2021 storm season officially kicks off with severe weather and hail in the southeast and a tornado outbreak in Texas. Here's the towering inferno, Max Olson, with the full story. Thanks, Matt. March ended up being a particularly impressive month when it came to severe weather. We're gonna go over the top three most impressive storm systems of March 2021, and then take a look into what April may hold. The first event we're gonna cover is the March 12th through 13th severe weather outbreak and snowstorm. A dry line set up in the Western Texas Panhandle for two days, pumping out multiple rounds of supercells, large hail, and tornadoes. The 13th was by far the most impressive day with 30 tornadoes reported and multiple areas receiving large hail. We intercepted a large EF2 tornado near Happy, Texas. This tornado crossed Interstate 27 at a width of over half a mile wide. In fact, this tornado likely would have been rated stronger than EF2, but thankfully there was not much out there for it to hit. Meanwhile, Colorado and Wyoming were receiving a historic snowstorm. Places like Denver received upwards of two feet of snow in a 48 hour period. The heaviest snow fell in northern Colorado where reports of over 30 inches of snow were received. The next major event was the high risk tornado outbreak on March 17th. Over 60 tornadoes were reported over this 24 hour period, especially in places like Mississippi and Alabama. Thankfully though, most of these tornadoes were on the lower end of the spectrum in the EF1 to EF2 categories. Now, just one week after that last high risk outbreak, another major tornado outbreak was taking aim on the southeastern states. This event started in central Texas. We observed a supercell that produced a tornado about 100 or so miles southwest of the Dallas-Fort Worth metro. Additional supercells then developed and dropped very large hail up to tennis ball size in portions of Dallas and points eastward. The following day, March 25th, ended up being yet another high-risk tornado outbreak. It's very rare for the Storm Prediction Center to issue two high risks within about a week of each other. This event featured less tornado counts, but the tornadoes that did happen were much stronger. As it stands right now, we only have the preliminary ratings out. We won't know the final numbers until later next week, but it looks like we're going to have at least three EF3 tornadoes with the potential for maybe even an EF4. We bounced around between multiple supercells all day long and finally ended up on one beast of a storm just south of Utah, Alabama. Now, chasing in this area is quite difficult because of all of the trees. I had my drone with me, and as we got in position for this supercell, I sent the drone up to see if it was able to capture what was coming our way. As I cleared the tree line, a massive wedge tornado was in progress, just about five miles to our southwest. We allowed the tornado to approach us and left at the last moment to dive south away from it out of its path. The tornado struck multiple houses in this area, causing what looked to be at the very least EF3 type damage. And you can see here this drone shot of all these flattened trees. It's amazing, you can see them almost bending inwards towards the center of the tornado's track. As it stands right now, 37 tornadoes were confirmed on March 25th. Now, March was an active month, but what will we see going into April? Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the computer models and see what they're showing. Now, I do have to mention, as I'm recording this update, we have yet another tornado outbreak ongoing. This time, we're seeing tornadoes all the way from Memphis down to Shreveport. In fact, my regular storm chase partner, Evan Hatch, got out chasing today. He's on this storm that's in northeastern Texas, and he said there is a monster tornado currently ongoing. That's going to be crossing into Louisiana here any moment. 
All right, as far as the forecast goes, we're looking here at moisture. We can see that this system is going to shunt that moisture down south back into the Gulf of Mexico, and it looks like it's gonna stay there. So we should have a lull for the next week or so until that moisture starts to return. Uh, this looks like it's going to be potentially an active period for the central United States. There's been a bit of run to run inconsistency. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this, but there have been a few runs now that we can see a storm system developing out West coming in oh, about a week into April. And it just kind of stays there with multiple short waves ejecting, which would mean multiple rounds of severe weather possible in the central states, places like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and then points eastward. If this forecast stays on point. As I said, there's been some run-to-run -run inconsistency, so we'll have to monitor this. But you can sure bet if there are tornadoes or severe hail, we will be out chasing. Stay safe out there, everyone. We're just now getting into the peak of the severe weather season. There's a lot left to go through. Back to you, Matt. Thanks, Max. And listen, be sure to visit and support Max's YouTube channel at Max Olson Chasing. He goes out and gets incredible footage and reporting at his own risk. And it's very important to remember that storm chasers like Max are often the first people to spot and report deadly tornadoes to local authorities who can then give early warning to local residents to immediately seek shelter. So bravo, Max, keep up the good work. And speaking of storm season, what is the one thing you can do right now to prepare yourself for the 2021 storm season? Well, let's talk about this for a minute because if you're not properly prepared for storm season, and you can't get on a storm during the summer, or you do get deployed and then you get let go or you quit the storm because you weren't ready, you're not going to get another chance until March, April, May of 2022. That's right, the next year. Because even though we've had a few active weather years in a row and an historic year in 2020, do not expect that con to continue. There is no evidence that year to year, there are any trends in storm activity. That doesn't mean that 2021 might not be even worse than 2020, but do not count on it. Generally speaking, adjusters can expect severe weather in the Midwest between about now-ish until late summer, early fall. The Atlantic hurricane season officially starts the end of May, but doesn't really do anything until usually August. The peak of hurricane season is mid-September and then finally tapers off and ends officially in November. Working cat property adjusters make their hay on wind and hail. If a hurricane hits, well, that's great. That's usually just gravy at the end of an already long working storm season for experienced adjusters. If you're an experienced adjuster and you're watching this from your hotel room on cat deployment right now, give us a hail yes in the comments. For the rest of you, what can you do to be in the best position to capitalize on the regular old wind and hail stuff that keeps food on the table for the experienced folks? Well, if you don't have an adjuster license of any kind right now, then you absolutely must get either your home state, if, you're, if your state where you live licenses adjusters, or your designated home state license, or DHS. So what does that mean? If you live in a state like Colorado, for example, Colorado doesn't license adjusters at all, which means you don't need a license to work claims in Colorado. However, if you wanna work in Texas, then you have to get a Texas adjuster license. Okay, so maybe you don't wanna work anywhere except for Colorado. There's no need to get a license, right? No, not right. The reason why is because IA firms aren't really gonna take you seriously if you don't have, at the minimum, your DHS license. So if you're in Colorado, then I would recommend picking up your Florida license to start. It's a great license to have, and it's reciprocal with most other states that also license adjusters. Reciprocity doesn't mean that you can just get Florida and then work in any other state, however. It means that other states like Texas, or Indiana, or Minnesota, will recognize the stuff you had to do to get your Florida license, including fingerprints, exam, background check, et cetera. And that goes for continuing education as well. You still have to apply for and pay for those other licenses, right? But why would somebody want to get more than just the one license if they don't want to work, leave home to work claims? Well, recently, many new opportunities for remote work have popped up giving adjusters of really any experience level the chance to write estimates or do back-end work on claims from the comfort of their own homes and PJs, which means that you, living in Colorado, could be taking the scope and photos from a claim that somebody looked at in Alabama and writing it up and getting paid for it. But you can't handle that Alabama claim without an Alabama adjuster license. 
So a smart claims professional, which is what you wanna be when you get into this business, will get as many licenses as possible as fast as possible. Every single license you get increases your chances for work, straight up. Of course, you have to get your gear lined up. Of course, you have to get good in Xactimate. Of course, you need to carry your certifications and you absolutely can't get any work if you haven't applied to any IA firms. But getting your license is the very first step. Get started right now at adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro. Adjuster Pro is a marketing partner with Adjuster TV and we wanna thank them and all of our sponsors. Without their support, Adjuster TV wouldn't be where it is now and I encourage you to visit our sponsors and let them know that you saw them on Adjuster TV. We work really, really hard to find the best products and services for you, the adjuster, so we only partner with businesses that we ourselves trust. All right, that's it for the news and just remember, Adjuster TV puts the C in claim. Thanks for watching and have a great storm.